I'm starting off with a large brush. I don't know if Fashion would have used such a large brush. Actually, I'm quite sure that he wouldn't have, but he also probably wouldn't be doing it in the amount of time that I was doing the study. So I'm just blocking in the large shapes, trying to get the placement of the head on the canvas. Now one thing in this study is that I got caught up a little more on the construction and making features side as we go along. So my goal here in blocking in the hair is to get a general value and to try to capture the overall color shifts that I see in Fession's work. That is one thing that I noticed is that it's not just a flat color in different values, but it's a gradation of colors, even if it's subtle. Now I'm using the round, a hard round brush for this entire painting, and that doesn't quite capture what Fashion did but it allows me to ignore the mark making and the texture and focus on the overall structure and colors. So I'm noticing some greens and some blues and grays in the hair as well as yellows for what I assume are this blonde hair. One thing you might notice is that my study ends up much more intense in color than the reference of Fession's work. But in my mind, when he painted it, it probably was more intense in color. And over the years, it would have faded to resemble what we see here. So in the nose, I notice some, some warmth in the nose from subsurface scattering. And I'm trying to capture that and get the shape of the shadow of the nose. And I see how it's connected to the shadow of the eye socket on the left. I'm ignoring the glasses for now. As the overall the structure of the face is probably more important than getting the glasses in right away. And putting in the whites of the eyes, obviously they're not pure white. If you look at the reference. Here you can see I started putting in some of the lights, even though I hadn't blocked in the shadows of the mouth yet, which is pretty odd for me. Some people, they work from finishing one feature and moving to the next, but I tend to work overall, so perhaps this is just part of the change of working digitally that allows me to work more specific areas before moving on, but normally in oil painting I'd work the, the painting overall. I'm not sure what Fession's procedure would be. If you, let, if you know, let me know. So right now I'm trying to work the transition between light and dark on the side of the nose where it falls into the cheek and starts to pick up some light. So one thing I noticed is that even though there are strong light and dark shapes, 
There's also these subtle gradations from light to dark. So here I'm blacking in the glasses just by putting in the darks and spots. then a slight lightening and obscuring where the lenses of the glasses are. And then where there aren't the darks showing the highlights from the glasses and they're much lighter than the skin because the, the metal is more reflective than the skin is. And I want to say the darks are fairly darker as well. And I noticed a, a warming in the highlight on the top edge of the glass. Now I'm working my way down into the mouth. I'm reminded of a demonstration given by Olga Kraman, where she quoted Sargent saying that a portrait is painting something wrong with the mouth. So in this case, I didn't block in the thirds for the forehead, the top of the hair, to the eyebrows, to the nose, to the chin. I didn't actually block those in with a line, but I am aware of it in my head, even though part of it would be obscured by the beard just working shape to shape to try to get the placement about correct. So you can't really just characterize it as warm shadow and cool lights or cool lights and warm shadow. There's warms and cools in both the lights and the shadows. Especially in the, the beard here. See yellows and grays. Which the gray ends up looking almost blue. There might be a hint of green there as well. So in the darks, it's not just pure black. I do see it bluer around the tie. And there are some lighter areas and darker areas even in this mass of darks of the shirt. And even though this collar is white, on the left it's mostly just in shadow. So you don't go very light at all, but it still reads as lighter than the, the jacket. Then I saw that there might have been a line, even though they say you don't use lines in painting. I did notice a warm line around the beard, between the beard and the collar of the shirt. One thing I noticed that was different between Fession's work and my own work is that the, the shadows, they have a definite design shape to them. As well, it seemed like it, the shadows got darker towards the edge where the 
cheek meets the ear. In my mind, I'd probably put the darkest dark closer to the cheek to show a, a form shadow without the bounce light and lighten up around the cheek, but he actually did the opposite than what I would normally think the artist would do. And obviously he pulled it off. Now I'm going in with some of the highlights at the tip of the nose and the glasses. This is probably more implied around the edge of the glasses there. You'll see from time to time the, the eyedropper tool comes out. I'm just sampling the color that's already there. And if it's not correct, then I'll just make a slight shift in hue or saturation or light or dark on the color wheel. Now one thing I might have gotten a little off here is that the, the lights of the skin really fade into the lights within the glasses and his and mine I probably separated out a bit too much. Should have connected more. And he really has a lost edge where the cheek and the background meet, and in mine it's more defined. It's interesting to re-watch a painting that you've done, and the process, not just the final piece. Part of me imagines that one day artists might do that and there might be commentary with the play-by-play -play, like in sports where people analyze each brush stroke. So I noticed in the background there's this grayish green as well as this yellow And as I said earlier, I don't, I'm not trying to emulate the texture exactly as what he has, but I am trying to capture the, the gradation of light to dark. And I see that he uses a, a lighter background on the side of the, the shadow side of the head to, to pop it out and create contrast there. And there actually is a, a warm, dark line around the ear and the side of the head that falls into shadow. Again, painters normally say you don't use lines, but I see what would be described as a warm, dark line used here. So with just a few minutes left, I'm using a much smaller brush, probably squinting and trying to get whatever I would consider to be the most important detail thing. I did notice a, a dark dark just above the glasses that is in the painting that I probably didn't get. I'm 
that just about does it. This is a one hour study of the master Nikolai Feshin. If you like this video, subscribe, click the thumbs up button, leave a comment below. Thank you, and I'll be back with another master copy in the next video.